Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories, let's start with the story. AITA for telling my girlfriend she's overreacting after discovering her son in a private moment? I 48M have been dating my girlfriend Kelly, 50F, for almost two years now. We're currently on vacation with her son Ryan, 23M, and his girlfriend Emily, 23F, as well as my sister, brother-in-law niece and her boyfriend. This vacation was meant to be a relaxing break for all of us a chance to unwind and enjoy each other's company. To give some context, I've known Ryan very well for nearly a decade. I was his coach in high school, and over the years we developed a strong bond. He's like a son to me. Ryan and Emily have been together since high school, and their relationship has always seen solid and loving. I've always admired how they've managed to maintain their connection through the ups and downs of growing up. When we were planning this trip, Kelly insisted that Ryan and Emily couldn't share a room. I initially thought she was joking, as it seemed like an unusual request. However, she was serious about it. I know Ryan is sexually active and has been for a while. I agreed to her rule, so Ryan and my niece's boyfriend were set to share a room, while my niece and Emily were supposed to share another. It seemed like a fair compromise at the time. As the trip approached, we all had mixed feelings. Kelly's insistence on the room arrangement felt a bit extreme to me, but I didn't want to create conflict. The night before we left, I handed out the room keys and explained the arrangement. Everyone seemed okay with it, though there was a noticeable lack of enthusiasm from some. The girls even had a slumber party on one of the first nights, which seemed like a fun way to bond. Ryan figured that Kelly's insistence on separating him and Emily was a way to placate her insecurities. He seemed to understand that this was more about Kelly's comfort than about their relationship. I handed him his room keys and said, give the second one to whoever, so he gave it to Emily. My niece also handed her spare key to her boyfriend, as we had anticipated. Things seemed to be going smoothly until one evening when Ryan left his wallet in our room. Instead of handing it to him at breakfast, knocking on his door, or sending a text, Kelly decided to use the key to enter his room. This was an unexpected decision that would have significant consequences. Kelly walked into the room and saw Ryan and Emily in a situation she didn't expect. To be fair, they weren't having sex. They were both naked from the waist down, but they were simply cuddling, with Ryan gently touching Emily's back. It was a tender, affectionate moment that was not intended to be seen by anyone else. Kelly was immediately distressed. She left the room in a state of panic and refused to come to breakfast. When I tried to comfort her, she was inconsolable. I told her that she should be grateful that she only saw them snuggling and not engaging in sexual activity. This comment, meant to ease her anxiety, only made her more upset. She accused me of not understanding her feelings and overreacting to the situation. Ryan is an adult who has been with the same woman for years, and I've never seen Emily do anything to warrant Kelly's strong dislike. Although Kelly has admitted that she doesn't like Emily, I've always seen Emily as a kind and caring person who genuinely loves Ryan. Emily's punky appearance contrasts with Ryan's more preppy style, but that hasn't affected how I view their relationship. Kelly's reaction escalated quickly. She called me names and accused me of siding with Emily over her. Her behavior was so out of character that I began to worry about her well-being. I wondered if she might have forgotten to take some of her mood-regulating medication as her response seemed disproportionate to the situation. Currently, while Kelly sulks inside, the rest of us are trying to enjoy the beach. Ida, to answer some questions, Ryan and Emily have been living together for about five years, and Ryan covered their share of the trip expenses. When Kelly first mentioned that they shouldn't share a room, I thought she was joking and laughed it off. It wasn't until we checked in, and I was handing out the keycards, that she reminded me of her rule. Instead of arguing, I handed out the keys and went to relax on the beach. Kelly is in therapy and takes medication for mood regulation, though I'm unsure if she has it with her during the trip. This added layer of complexity has made the situation even more challenging. I'm trying to process everything while on vacation, and it's been difficult to keep up with all the comments. I appreciate the feedback, though I'm not able to respond to everyone. Update Thank you to everyone who commented. I've read every comment, even if I didn't reply. Your feedback has been helpful and sometimes entertaining. To clarify a few things, I'm aware that Kelly has mental health issues, but in the nearly two years we've been together, 
I hadn't noticed anything particularly troubling. Her relationship with Ryan has improved over time, and she's been attending therapy and taking medication for mood regulation. I've always been cautious about enabling behavior, including Kelly's. When she first mentioned separating Ryan and Emily, I genuinely thought she was joking. I didn't take it seriously. When she reminded me in the lobby, I thought it was an absurd request but decided not to argue. I handed out the keys and went to relax on the beach. I decided to speak to Ryan first, as I've known him the longest and figured he would be the most understanding. He was surprisingly calm about the situation and even apologized, which I assured him was unnecessary. Ryan mentioned that Kelly had previously struggled with issues of emotional incest, particularly when he was a teenager. This ongoing issue seemed to have resurfaced with this situation. Emily shared that Kelly had previously walked in on them having sex during their high school years, which had led to Ryan moving in with Emily's family. This history added another layer to Kelly's reaction. Kelly managed to secure an emergency therapy appointment, which significantly helped her calm down. During our conversation, she revealed that the incident triggered old traumas related to her experiences as a single mother and feelings of abandonment. Ryan's father left her shortly after Ryan was born, leaving her to raise him on her own. These unresolved issues likely played a significant role in her intense reaction. When I asked Kelly about her dislike for Emily, she initially said it was because Emily was opinionated and seemed to have Ryan under her control. I encouraged her to reframe her feelings more constructively. Kelly eventually admitted that she was upset because Ryan appeared so devoted to Emily. I reminded Kelly that she should be proud of raising a son who deeply loves and appreciates his partner. This conversation seemed to help improve her mood. Interestingly, Kelly's therapist suggested she consult her primary care doctor or obstetrics slash gynecology about menopause, which might explain her extreme reaction. Kelly confirmed that she had forgotten to bring some of her mood-regulating medication, and her sister was bringing it to her later in the trip. Finally, Ryan and Emily joined us for a heartfelt discussion. There were apologies, tears, and hugs as they expressed their feelings. They acknowledged that the main issue was Kelly's uninvited entry into their room. Kelly admitted that she had hoped to catch them off guard but couldn't justify her actions. Ryan set clear boundaries with Kelly, something I've seen him do before, and respect him for. Kelly took responsibility and shared the details of her therapy session, which led to understanding and compassion from Ryan and Emily. Emily even suggested we have a drink together to help smooth things over. We all agreed that the situation was ridiculous and that we wanted to enjoy our vacation. Kelly eventually joined us, and we managed to relax and enjoy the rest of our time together. Our days were filled with drinks, beach outings, good food, and naps, and despite the rocky start, I couldn't have been happier with how things turned out.